Everybody, welcome to Snow Talk. Uh, Brian Good here on this Friday the 13th. And uh, one thing I want to mention before we get into all the details is look at the stats there. Uh-oh, last year has passed us up now. 2.6 as of today, last year. Um, we're at 2.4 for this year, and we should be at 4.1. But I do think things are going to flip around. I know you guys probably don't believe me, but we'll get to that in a second. On the snowboard, you do see at least the snow symbols are back on the board. We're the end of the period, and they could very well get pushed back even further out, but I do think they're on there. All right, so let's uh, look at the radar trends. Let's talk about this freeze and rain issue today. This has been the topic all week long, and, and freeze and rain is so complicated because you really change the, the temperature one or two degrees uh, at the uh, the lower layer of the surface or layer of the atmosphere at the surface level, and you get a completely different outcome. And the cold layer doesn't have to be very thick. It can hover. Um, it could be a thin layer of cold air, still they'll be above freezing right at the point where your feet touch the ground, but be below freezing at where, say, your porch light is, and your trees in your yard, and then go back above freezing above the tree line. It can be that thin of a layer, and it kind of wavers a bit. And that's what makes it complicated, because that affects the icing potential, because usually elevated objects then will get that coating of ice, the trees, the porches, and uh, even some shrubs, while the roads will remain on the wet side. And I think that's kind of the setup we were looking at for those of you north and west of Louisville is more of an icing on elevated objects like that. The cold layer is not overly thick, but it is thick enough that some icing, and it's persistent enough that some icing can take place with a light glaze. Uh, but it doesn't look to be a much more of that scenario for us. D different issue to the west of us in Missouri and Illinois, but for us, we seem to be okay. Uh, we're watching the radar trends. You see the moisture beginning to increase now along I-64. So uh, for those of you in Barthstown, and Etown, you're about to get another whopping here of decent rain, a cold rain at that. Temperatures are actually colder in Indiana, but there hasn't been any precipitation for you guys. It's been drier. Question is, what will happen when that moisture moves in? It's going to lift its way in your area. It's going to take a few more hours to get there, but it will. At the same time, you will begin to warm up slowly. Question is, which one is going to happen first? The rise in the thermometer or the rain getting over your area while you're still below freezing? And that's what we got to figure out this morning. Having said that, I still think it's going to be an issue where it's mainly wet roads, and I'll explain why in just a second. For those of us in Louisville and South, we're talking about just a cold rain. Notice, yeah, a few of you are at 34 degrees. We're not expecting you to drop much more than that, all right? So we're not concerned about freezing issues in Kentucky. Um, when you look at the wider view, you can see the setup across Illinois, Missouri. We're getting reports now of some of the tall grasses in Illinois bending over. There's so much weight already from the ice, about a quarter of an inch in some cases. So it's already become a significant for our friends here where temperatures in the 20s. It's going to be a major ice storm uh, for these guys. We've been through this. We know their pain. All right. Several icing reports have already been re uh, reported during the overnight for Missouri, Illinois, and far southwest Indiana. Here's what I think is the saving grace, though, for a lot of us, is including Indiana. The road temperatures are still into the upper 30s in many cases here on 65 and 64. And uh, keep in mind, pavement is slower to respond in a temperature change in the air. So, yes, it's gotten colder, but the pavement is just not reacting quick. And that is going to be a saving grace to keep mainly wet roads. And that's why we're talking about mainly elevated objects. And that makes it difficult for the Weather Service when it comes to issuing advisories. Because you will see icing, in some cases in Indiana, probably out of this entire event in the next 36 hours. On the trees in your yard, you'll see the icicles. But you may not be under an advisory because the roads are expected to be fine. It's a travel issue versus an impact in the and uh, the impact of the ice uh, developing in your area. So, tough call on their half. I feel their pain on that, but there is an advisory out for freezing rain in our far northern counties from Lawrence over to uh, Jennings as a result of potential for maybe some side roads to be icy. Here's future cast that shows the pink area. Again, today as the day wears on, we should expect, even though we've got a north wind, we should at least moderate temperature-wise to get some improving weather. So even if you got some light icing across Indiana, it should rise. Should. Key factor on that. I've seen many times where you don't in these scenarios, and the northeast wind ends up being the rule. Uh, and then tonight, better chance for Indiana to drop to the freeze market or lower again, and that's where the advisory is out, but the precipitation becomes more drizzle, although that can still cause problems. But freezing drizzle, I think, would become a problem to our north, and that may be a trend all the way through Saturday morning to at least midday, and then everybody, by the time we end to Saturday, and certainly to Sunday, I think we'll finally get a chance to improve our weather, but it's going to be a touchy process for those of you off to the north of Louisville. Stay tuned for updates. It's not a sure bet on any of this here, guys. These are touch and go deals when thermometer 
change in your neighborhood even can make a different impact than your uh, friends down the road. So uh, we'll just uh, stay on it, keep you updated on that. Looking toward the end of the holiday weekend, warm front moves in on Sunday, warmer weather. Sunday night into Monday, temperatures rise, and for the holiday itself, windy and warm. I was tempted to go 70 for the holiday. I'm going to keep it in the 60s for now. I'll let Kevin and Ryan decide that for later. Uh, but the rain should hold off until Monday night and certainly the Tuesday, even some thunder. And then for that following week, I had a touch base on this yesterday. Seeing signs of very strong low pressure developing in the nation's heartland. It could really send temperatures perhaps in the 70s, which would be record level, by the way. And yes, potential is still there for thunderstorms. I can't tell you if they're going to be severe or not, but I wouldn't rule that out either. Stay tuned. Now, the pattern right now across the northern hemisphere all the cold air, pieces of the polar vortex locked in across the north. As we head toward the end of the month, we see the dip finally take place in the eastern part of the United States. And the waves, the signal analysis that I look at a lot, this is what it has for the current setup for this weekend. Warmer pattern building back into the area as we head into next week matches perfectly. And this is a forecast uh, that does hope well for a while now. Then as we head into after that severe weather potential storm, we begin to see the drop. And then as we head into the last couple of days of January, the cold air works its way in. And then as we begin February, look at that. Cold Arctic air. And I love the angle too of the cold air because this is a good setup for low pressures in the deep south to ride northeast. You know, you snow lovers know what that means. So be patient, snow lovers. Pattern change is still showing up in the models. Nothing has changed there.